conservative new media viewers, Jeremy Lin fans around the world. What's up? It's me, PFV, Paul F. Villarreal, the NBA expert. We're here to discuss the Brooklyn Nets 118-111 to defeat tonight to the Orlando Magic in Orlando, Florida. Orlando improves to 12 and 16 on the season, and Brooklyn falls to 7 and 18. Look, this was a tough game to lose. It really was because it was a winnable game. The Nets looked good, particularly in the first half of this game. They didn't have a really bad third quarter, which we know they struggled with before. But, excuse me. Essentially, this game got away from them in the fourth quarter. Orlando outscored them by six points in that fourth quarter. And Brooklyn got into foul trouble early in the fourth quarter. And it what it ended up doing was Orlando got many more free throw attempts in the fourth quarter than Brooklyn did. At one point, it was like 15-0 to zero at some point. And obviously, they only lost by seven points, so that made a big difference. The other things that were key in tonight's game were Brooklyn turned the ball over too much, 17 turnovers to seven for Orlando. And the Magic had 13 offensive rebounds to only six of the Magic. As... Strange as this sounds, I think the Nets actually might have gotten a little bit too cocky in this game because they were being able to score pretty easily. And I think through much of this game, and I think that might have made them a little less focused on defense. Kind of like, well, we can score whenever we want. We'll just keep scoring points. And this game was very close with two or three minutes left. And Orlando simply executed better in that last couple minutes than the Nets did. Now, I will say this, and this just to be honest, and he'd say it himself. In fact, he did say it himself. Jeremy had a couple of tough moments down the stretch of this game. Now, that's completely normal. It happens to everybody. Certainly, it can happen to somebody who is in his second game back after being away for six weeks. And he's still coming off of, uh, you know, an an irritated back. Jeremy missed a couple shots late, and he had a couple defensive, maybe not the best decisions down the stretch as well. But that's the way it is. I mean, that's how it goes. And what I liked about what Jeremy said after the game, because I watched the post game, He took responsibility for it, and he basically said, look, the ball's in my hands, and i got to make shots. I've got to make plays. Now, with that being said, I'm definitely not putting all the blame or anything on Jeremy. Jeremy and Brooke are the two best players on the team. They should have the ball in their hands late. They should be the ones making plays late. That's how it should go. And so sometimes you succeed, and sometimes you don't. But... Coach Atkinson mentioned in his own post-game remarks that the execution is off right now, and that's because guys have been in and out of the lineup, and there's been they've been using different lineups. So it's not just Jeremy. It's even though Jeremy might miss a shot, he's the one that took the shot and missed it. It's the whole thing. It's the whole play. It's the execution. It's the setup. It's everything, and so. It's not just Jeremy missing a shot. It's the way the whole offensive set is. It's everything. It's the coaching decision. Coach Atkinson said, look, I could be better too. It's just tonight they just got beat. This was basically an even game down the stretch, and Orlando outdid them. And that's the way it's going to happen like that sometimes. That being said, overall, Jeremy looks really good since he's come back. And we, we certainly we talked about his game. The other night uh, against Houston, where he had seven assists, one turnover, and what did he have, 10 or 12 points? Tonight, he played another strong game. 17 points, three rebounds, three assists, and only one turnover. So in the two games he's been back, he has 10 assists and two turnovers, which is incredible. Now, he was a minus nine tonight, and... This wasn't 
I mean, he put up really nice numbers. This wasn't the best game he's ever played. And that's okay. Like I said, I mean, he's just coming, he's just coming off the injuries. But he still put up good numbers. And he still only turned the ball over one time. He played 20 minutes tonight, which is basically the exact number that he played in the last game. So what they are doing, which is what they did in the, uh, in, in the Houston game, is they're basically trying to play him the final five minutes of each quarter. Or if he gets in with maybe four minutes, then they'll play him four minutes of, the, of one quarter, and then in the next quarter they'll play him the first minute, and then they'll take him out. That's what happened tonight. So when Jeremy came back into this game in the fourth quarter with about four minutes and 50 seconds left, I believe the game was tied at like 99 or something like that. And then, like I said, Magic got the better of these guys. The Magic, they're not that good, but they never were out of this game. They were just kind of hanging around, hanging around, and they, they surged at the very end when they needed to. And the Nets kind of did the reverse. Let's go over the stats very quickly. Brooke Lopez, 22 points, 6 rebounds. Boyan Bogdanovich, 15 points. Sean Kilpatrick, 13 points, 6 rebounds. Luis Scola, 11 points. Rondé Hollis Jefferson, 9 points, 5 rebounds. Jeremy Lin, as I mentioned, 17 points. That was the second best on the Nets tonight. The Magic, 21 points from Evan Fournier. Uh, Nikola Vucevic off the bench, 21 points, 10 rebounds. DJ Augustin, 17 points. Serge Ibaka, 18 points. Aaron Gordon, 13 points. This was, um, like I said, it was a pretty even game. It was a pretty even game. And it, for a while, it looked like Brooklyn was really going to kind of just run away with it. And as I said, that might have made them a little bit too complacent in this game. But overall, they, they executed pretty well. I mean, they shot 47% from the field. They shot 41% from three and hit 11 threes. They simply didn't play proper defense down the stretch. Uh, you'll hear the term playing defense with your arms rather than your legs. That means you're fouling too much. You're not moving. You're reaching. And if you're going to play proper defense, you've got to move your legs. You've got to shift around so you don't get fouls called on you. Uh, unfortunately, Orlando got they got into the bonus early in the fourth quarter, and those free throws just racked up, racked up, racked up, and the Nets weren't able to overcome that. So one of the things you have to learn as a young team and as a team with little chemistry, meaning you're just starting to play with one another even if you're not young in terms of age, you just have to learn – You've got to learn how to win. You've got to learn how to focus. You've got to you've got to learn how to kind of bear down and who's going to get the ball laid and all these different things. This team is just it's again not everybody's young. Jeremy's not super young. Brooks not super young, but they're they're in their infancy in terms of chemistry. We're still only 25 games in in the, the first year that, all, that these guys have played together. So you're going to get this. You're going to get this. You're going to get this, and uh, it's just part of the growing process. To be honest, a game like tonight is going to hurt, though, in terms of playoffs and stuff like that. But, look, it's, uh, you know, we just have to take it one game at a time right now. I mean, now it's just win what you can win. And then we'll think about playoffs, and we'll think about 500 and so forth. The main, Honestly, the main thing for this team right now is to get healthy and stay healthy. And then work, build your chemistry, build your habits, and so forth. But I'm not really, I'm not, I don't know, like I wasn't mad about this game. I don't feel mad that they lost because they didn't play poorly. They just let it get away from them. Now, which is a little bit of a different thing. They tried hard. They had good focus and good purpose in the second half. It just kind of relaxed a little bit too much in the second half. And it's particularly in the fourth quarter. And uh, it can happen. It can happen. But overall, look, you've got to be really happy with how Jeremy looks overall. He's looking very good on his drives. I think his defensive lateral movement 
the movement side to side. I think that might still be a little bit off from the hamstring and the back. But basically, he looks pretty much like himself. One of the things Coach Atkinson said after the game was that basically the performance team, the, you know, the, the fitness staff and the health staff, they're running the show in terms of how to manage players. So it, it, that's basically sounding like it's not really Coach's decision. It's their performance staff's uh, decision. So they might be the ones saying, Jeremy's only going to play 20 minutes tonight. And then Coach has to kind of adjust to that because he was asked about that, and that's basically the answer that he gave. And uh, I said it before, the Nets are very cautious on injuries. They're, they're, they focus on preventative medicine and in precaution. They don't want to push the limit. They want to push towards being more safe instead. That's what they're doing. They're doing it with Jeremy. You know what? If he doesn't get hurt anymore this year, then it's worth it. Yes, it might take him two weeks to work back up to playing 35 minutes and, and, and starting. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I have no idea. But uh, if he doesn't get hurt anymore, good. And if he isn't getting hurt going forward, good. Because I think he's going to be with the Nets for a while. And hopefully he just won't have any injury issues. And this will be the, the kind of the rare exception to the general rule with him. Because he just doesn't get hurt that much. Or he hasn't in the past four or five years. That's, that's pretty much it. Look, as I said, just being realistic and being honest. There was a couple times in this game where I thought, you know, Jeremy shot, maybe he should have passed, maybe he should have ran the offense a little bit more. But as Coach Atkinson said, that's not just a Jeremy Lin issue. That's an offensive execution, offensive chemistry, and so forth issue. In other words, Jeremy's got the ball in his hand. If the guys on the floor aren't organized or they're not in sync, then Jeremy might make a decision, well, okay, play's kind of breaking down. I'm going to make something happen. And that happens, especially if you're, the, if you're the top guy, if you're the go-to guy, which Jeremy is clearly the guy or one of the two guys along with Brooke, that's what he's supposed to do. And, and again, just to be completely fair and honest here, Jeremy has to continue to work on those one-on-one -on -one moves. We've talked about that before. Because he's not super hyper-explosive athlete, sometimes it's tougher for him. The more you do it, the better you get. So, you know, Jeremy's still in the early stages of being allowed to be the guy. He wasn't allowed to be the guy really anywhere else he played except in New York. And maybe the first year in Houston, although that's not true either because Harden came in and Harden was the guy. So, in other words, it takes time to assume that role. You have to get used to doing it. And then you have to figure out what are your go-to moves, what do you want to do, and so forth. Not to mention, he's only in his second game back from being injured. Yep. It just takes time. It's just a growing process and development process. But like I said, I don't – I mean, I want him to win, but I'm not mad. I just – it's – there are going to be some games like this, and hopefully the team will quickly adjust to that and get better. Something else that was mentioned in this game. Let me see here. Seven – 12 men played in this game. Randy Foy did not play. So he's the only person who was active who didn't play. And then the two inactives were Chris McCullough and Justin Hamilton. It was said during the broadcast that Justin Hamilton is healthy now. But they just basically Anthony Bennett has passed him up in the rotation. So, Anthony Bennett's the backup center right now, essentially, and Justin Hamilton is, I guess, just maybe he's fallen out of the rotation. I, I don't, and apparently not because of the migraines. Maybe they're just not, just don't feel like that's what they want to do right now. I'm okay with that. Justin Hamilton is an excellent shooter, and he can help 
create driving lanes for Jeremy because he creates more space on the floor with the shooting. But he's been struggling with his shot. Anthony Bennett is capable of hitting three-pointers. He was one for two on that tonight. Anthony Bennett's a little shorter than Justin Hamilton, but he's more athletic. He can get up and down the court a little bit more, rebound perhaps a little bit more. So I'm okay with that. I'm quite fine with that, actually. Nothing against Justin, but for the team, I think that can work out. Spencer Dinwiddie still looks lost. I mean, we're going to have to see what he can bring. Uh, Hopefully he can bring something. Maybe he can't. I don't know. But he just needs to kind of... Now, he's behind everybody else because he wasn't in training camp and, and, and this type of thing. So he doesn't, you know, he's still kind of finding his way. So I don't want to judge him too harshly yet uh, and say that he can't play at this level. We'll just have to wait and see on that. Otherwise, I, you know, like I said, I mean, it's, it was a pretty, it was a solid game. It was, it was basically, it was a pretty, unlike the, the last game, which was, I can't remember who they played again now, which is silly. Last game was an ugly game. There wasn't a lot of rhythm. There wasn't a lot of flow. This game was more rhythm, more flow. It wasn't bad. It was more watchable. And it was, both teams played fairly well. Now, so, again, I, it's just the Nets lost, unfortunately, which is not the result that we want, but that's what ended up happening. There's something else I wanted to say about Jeremy and, and Atkinson and the, and the execution. Yeah. Coach Atkinson also said that one of the things that hurt the team down the stretch was that Orlando was switching the pick and roll. When Jeremy missed his two shots late, they were both off of switched pick and rolls. What that meant in this circumstance was that Jeremy was going up against Nikola Vucevic on defense. Vucevic is about seven foot tall, which meant that all of a sudden Jeremy had to shoot over a seven footer. He didn't, I don't think he was planning on that being the case, and that messed his shots up. So I think that was, coach mentioned that if you they weren't ready for it, then sure, that's gonna, that can throw you off a little bit if that's not what the defensive alignment that you're expecting to see. So that's pretty much it. Uh, Again, though, I think, uh, but for the loss, which of course hurts, this can be a good learning tool for the team. Jeremy said after the game, as well as he said, look, I'm, I'm balls in my hands. I got to make shots. So he's taking responsibility, which he always does. He also said that he wants the team to play physical. He wants them to play physical defense. You just have to be able to play physical without getting fouls. And they just... It just in the last period, it, it just didn't didn't work out for them. They, they kind of got in foul trouble early and so forth. When Jeremy is able to play more minutes, when he can play 35 minutes, that is definitely going to help the team because then Jeremy can be, not only can he play with the starters a little bit more, but he can also play with the second unit a little bit more, and that second unit might need a little bit more help. So that's pretty much it. Oh, one other thing I should say, Donatus Moti Yunus is now an unrestricted free agent. Now, there was an opportunity that he was going to come to Brooklyn before while he was a restricted free agent. Now he is unrestricted, but apparently, according to the collective bargaining agreement, which the NBA operates under, Moti Yunus still can't come to Brooklyn because he signed an offer sheet that was matched by Houston. Apparently, that means the Nets are not a, permitted to give him a contract f- from like one year, I guess, maybe when their their original contract was matched. That seems really silly. It would be great to be able to pick him up. I'm sure the Nets aren't thrilled about that, and I'm sure Mota Yunus himself isn't thrilled about that. But that's the rule, and so that apparently, even though he is now a tr- uh, completely unrestricted free agent, apparently the Nets aren't going to be able to get their hands on him. S- haven't heard anything about trades or, or, or anything on that front. As I told you, December 15th is when the trading season really gets into full swing. 
have not heard anything. If I would, I would imagine that the Nets want to just get their team fully healthy and let them play for a while, kind of get a sense of what they have. Then they might start looking more trades and this type of thing. So that's about it. So let's talk about the next game coming up. That game will take place two days from now on Sunday, December 18th here in the United States. And it will take place in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania against the Philadelphia 76ers. 6 p.m. Eastern time here in the USA. And it will be carried on Yes Network and NBA League Pass. This is another game that the Nets can win. It'll be similar to tonight's game. The Philly is not a good team. They they do have talent. They do have talent, but they're they're trying to figure it all out. They're a struggling team. And it's important to try to win because the three games after the Philadelphia game are going to be very difficult. It's after right after Phillies against Toronto. I think the next game after that is against Golden State, and the next game after that is going to be Cleveland. Those are going to be really difficult to win, even if the Nets play at their top level. So hopefully we can get back on the winning track against Philadelphia and just kind of survive those, those three games against those powerful teams. And look, maybe in those couple of games, maybe Jeremy can kind of be working his way back up to playing more minutes and so forth. So that's where we're at. Like I said, this, this is an unfortunate loss. Um, let, let's just, again, go to Philly and try to make up for it, and let's just take it from there. Hope you're having a great night or great day wherever you are around the world. Take care. We will talk to you again in less than 48 hours. Remember, the Sunday game, a little bit of an early start, 6 p.m. Brooklyn Nets against the Philadelphia 76ers. See you on 